Now, as you can see, we cut and collapsed the threads to, to back that nipple out. And the most important part when that process is done is not to cut the threads. So when you cut the, the threads vertically, you have to make sure you don't nick the threads. And as you can see, we didn't. So the plug should go right in, and there won't be a problem. Because this is a larger size thread, we're going to use a combination of pipe dope wick, which is a plumber string, and Teflon tape. So this is the plug that we're going to use to plug that 3-inch brass pipe, and we're going to use a combination of pipe dope wick and Teflon. Hopefully you can see this. The threads on anything larger than two inch are much wider than anything under two inch and the, the spaces between the threads are so thick that sometimes there's space is left in there and that's where the combination of the wick, teflon, and the pipe dope come in to play. The wick is basically plumber string. What we want to do with this is find one thread, and the first thing you do is gauge it by wrapping it around the plug. And you want to pull just this thread out without tangling the whole bunch. Okay, here comes the important part. When you lay it across the thread, you lay it perpendicular to the threads. Put your finger on it. When you wrap it around, and follow in the grooved spaces of the thread right around. Make sure that you get every thread without crossing into the next thread next to it. And that starter line holds everything together. thing with wicking is it expands when it gets wet, so when you turn the water on, it'll expand and stop any leaks from coming in. The Teflon and the rectus seal are more of a lubricant. everywhere. Now the plug is in place and we're going to tighten it up with two wrenches. Never one wrench, always two wrenches. So here we are with two wrenches, both two foot pipe wrenches. This one is on the plug tightening and this one is backing up the 90 so that you don't stress the subsequent piping that runs up. Always use two wrenches. We're here in this 11-story building in downtown Boston, and we're in the boiler room, which is in the sub-basement. And we're going to look at some of these ginormous boilers that are right behind here. There's actually three. These are Hodge boilers <clears throat> made by the Hodge Company in East Boston. And usually they're uh, fired off by a engineer who maintains the, these boilers, but these are dead, just like the men who installed them. They're all dead. These, I believe, are coal chutes here, and they used to shovel down the coal from upstairs down into here to fire these. 
is some more of the steam work. These, these boilers are steam boilers. And a lot of these are flash tanks for condensate. And some of them are for domestic hot water. This building was built in the 1920s. Here's some fancy fire protection main work. And basically, uh, this is a pump that kicks on. It's all integrated into the fire system. Right now, we're standing in what actually is a giant air duct. And uh, these are actually all disconnected old steam radiator grills. And I'm not sure if you can appreciate how large they are, but uh, they're probably about 11 feet tall. And there's several of them. So the, the air would pass across these while they were filled with steam to heat the entire building. This here is actually a steam water heater, which gets its energy from the steam utility, which comes in just like your water, except it's steam, and uh, gets regulated with this pneumatic valve and this little compressor, and serves as a domestic water heater.